Hello, this presentation shows the use of spreadsheet in performing basic capital budgeting calculations. My name is Pat Obi, Professor of Finance at Purdue University Calumet. Now, the key capital budgeting model is the net present value, which really is the present value of all of the cash flows. Be sure to include the initial cash flow, which is typically the cost of the investment, because the NPV means present value of all the cash flows net of the cost and if it comes out to be positive you select the project if it is negative you accept the project because you will lose money so here for these two projects shown here the cost of capital is 12 percent both projects will cost five thousand dollars the cash flows for project A are shown here and the cash flows expected for project B are also shown here the payback periods for the two projects have already been determined. Now, for this calculation, I'm just going to concentrate on project A. So I'm going to kill those results there and recalculate them. For NPV, it's equal NPV, open parenthesis, and it says for the first input here, the rate. So you click on the cell containing the rate. Try not to type in anything within a function. Reference them instead. And then, comma. For the cash flows, it says start from value number one. All right, you see it right here. Value one means cash flow one. So click, hold, and drag down. Close parenthesis. All right, and then you subtract the cost minus the cost. But be careful here. The way I identify the cash flows are with respect to whether they are cash inflows or outflows. For example, at time zero, we have a cash outflow of five thousand dollars, and since I typed it in as such, I have to be I have to be sure that it is really being subtracted. By typing negative here, and cell B six is also a negative, it'll instead add it. So to make sure that it is actually subtracted, I should correctly type in positive there. So my mathematical result is intact. So a minus negative number would actually be subtracting the negative number. And so I hit enter. And that's it right there. For IRR equal IRR, open parenthesis. It's simple. Simply highlight all the values, all the cash flows starting from zero and all the way to the last. Close. Enter. For MIRR it's equal MIRR open parenthesis you get all the values again all of these right comma it prompts you for the finance rate the finance rate is the cost of capital of 12 percent comma and then it prompts you for the reinvestment rate the reinvestment rate is also the cost of capital of 12 percent that's the assumption made that on the reinvestment rate assumption so close parenthesis and that's it one more thing I have to show you though, go right back here to the IRR. When I type in the function for IRR and I get all the values as I did earlier, now there's this here which says guess. It's in brackets, meaning it is actually optional. You don't have to put in a guess rate from which the computer would iterate. So simply close parenthesis to get that. And so, if these projects are independent, meaning that the selection of one has no bearing on the selection of the other, then both should be accepted based on their NPVs, because both projects have positive net present values and will therefore add value to the firm. Based on the IRR, again, both projects should be selected, because both projects IRR exceed the cost of capital of 12%. The same goes for the um, modified internal rate of return, which I need to be careful. I'm not quite so sure what I did there. So let's recalculate the IRR, the MIRR for project A. So that's MIRR, I'm sorry, open parenthesis, get all these values, comma, click on 12%, comma, click on it again, close parenthesis. Now that's correct. Okay, so now the payback period will depend on what the criterion set by the firm is. If you want to select a project based on the payback period, then you'd have to ask yourself, what's the maximum payback period set by the firm? If it is, for example, four years, then both should be selected if they are independent. Now, but if they are mutually exclusive, then you really want to select project B because you'll get your money back more quickly.
If they are mutually exclusive again, meaning that the selection of one means the rejection of the other, based on the NPV, you should select A because A's NPV is greater than that of B. Based on the IRR, guess what? You'd have to select B because B's IRR is greater than that of A. Herein we have a conflict between the NPV and the IRR. To investigate the nature of this conflict, we calculate the NPV profile. The NPV profile is simply the NPV of the two competing projects at different costs of capital, which I have identified here. Right, so different costs of capital, you can choose any rates that you want and end wherever you like. So for here, what I'm going to do is to calculate NPV for each of these projects at the different costs of capital. So at 0%, the NPV for A would be 3000 dollars and for B click on zero for the rate comma get the cash flows from one to the last close parenthesis subtract the cost and now I copy down but before I do so make the cells invariant in other words make make the in cash inflow cells permanent so they don't move along the spreadsheet as I copy down to do so hit the function key F2 it will reveal the input cells and here the green and the purple cells are the cash inflows so over click B7 there hit F4 over click B11 F4 over click B6 for the cash flow at time 0 hit F4 those dollar signs tell the computer to not move along those cells as you copy down enter you do the same for B F2 to edit and then F4 to make permanent and then highlight the two and copy down that's it and by the way when copying down on columns adjacent to a filled up column you don't really have to do it in such a tedious manner because you could have thousands and thousands of rows so here's a quick way to do so undo you highlight and then once you take your cursor to the lower right corner, once it becomes a simple black cross, double click, and it's going to copy down all the way to the row containing the last entry for the filled up adjacent column. If there is no filled up column adjacent, then you cannot do that. Okay, so here we highlight these three columns and then go to insert and choose line graph the first one is fine and that's it right here All right now we need to clean this up first of all get rid of the legend we don't need that let's make this a little larger now observe that the computer um, automatically plots all three variables rate NPV A and NPV B we don't want the rates to plot the rate is the blue one so right click on the graph anywhere and click select data and click on rate and remove it and then notice if you go if we um, click OK and go up here you'll see that the x-axis labels are actually logical numbers they are not the percent numbers that we chose so again right click on the graph and go to select data and for the x-axis go here click edit and click hold right here go down OK and OK. Now if you scroll back up you'll see that the correct labels have been identified. Now label your graph. Which one is NPV A line and which one is NPV B? Well to find out click on say the red one and you see it highlights A. The green one is B. So let's come here on the graph and go to insert choose text box and type project A and over here insert text box project B and then insert shapes arrow from here point to the line over here insert shapes 
arrow from here point to the line. One final labeling here. Notice that where the lines cut the x-axis are actually the IRRs for the two projects. Here, the IRR for project B right at this point is actually 18.15%, which you see here. And over here, the IRR for A is actually this 15.58%. So it's right here. So you can label them, right? Insert text box up here. Just simply type IRR parenthesis B. And over here, insert text box IRR for A. And then insert shapes arrow from here to the line and over there insert shapes arrow from here to the line all right now though observe where these two profiles cut is actually where their NPVs are identical and this the rate corresponding to this crisscrossing here is known as the crossover rate. And you can actually put a line there to kind of identify it in some casual manner. So go here, all right, insert shapes, get this simple line here, and we're right about there, something like that. Then come here, now hold the shift key, and then click, hold, and drag it up. The reason you hold the shift key while drawing a line is so the line doesn't wobble around. So approximately we can see that the crossover rate is in the neighborhood of 13%. We can find that value exactly by calculating the IRR of the cash flow changes. So the change, this minus this, right? And then just copy down and come here, calculate the IRR of the cash flow changes. And that's it. So actually, we can go up in decimals here. It's exactly 12%. This is critical because the IRR of the cash flow changes, which is the crossover rate, marks the point where there is a conflict between the NPV and the IRR. Observe, for any cost of capital below 12.72%, any of these numbers here would give us a higher NPV for project A than for B. You can see the red line plus above the green line. But if the cost of capital were to be above 12.72%, right in this region, NPV would select B over A, and there would be no conflict because IRR for B is already greater. So the zone of conflict is actually over here, which is where the costs of capital are less than the crossover rates. Observe, if we were to choose a cost of capital above 12.72%, let's say for example, let's say for example 13%, you can see here B's NPV is now greater than that of A. And of course, IRR is greater than that of A, so there would be no conflict. But if we chose a value, as um, has been the case, less than 12.72%, let's say 10%, you will see NPV A is greater than that of B, but IRR for B is greater. So conflict occurs whenever the cost of capital in use by the firm is less than the underlying crossover rate. Above the crossover rate, there would be no conflict. Now, the crossover rate is the rate at which the project's NPVs are identical. So if I hit equal there and reference the cell, you see that their NPVs are identical. Now, therefore, whenever a cost of capital is used that results in a conflict between the NPV and the IRR, it is generally advisable to make your project selection based on the NPV because the NPV is more apropos to the value maximizing goal. For example, here you would be adding about 519.5 to the value of the firm if you choose A whereas you would be adding only 468.34 to the value of the firm. And this concludes this presentation.